Scientists now believe Homo sapiens arrived in Northern Europe at least 45,000 years ago, as evidenced by bones found in a German cave. Comparisons of tools and bones discovered in Germany suggest that early members of our species may have traveled as far as Britain, while the Neanderthals were still living in the region. Homo sapiens may have occupied the site intermittently as early as 47,500 years ago, according to the available evidence. In fact, the human remains found deep beneath a German castle reveal our ancestors' hidden history. Until recently, it was thought that our species gradually spread across Europe, replacing the Neanderthals who already lived there. However, recent discoveries suggest that some pioneering Homo sapiens attempted to colonize Europe thousands of years earlier than once believed. This fundamentally changes our previous knowledge about the period. Homo sapiens reached northwestern Europe long before the Neanderthal disappearance in southwestern Europe. This discovery fundamentally changes our previous knowledge of this time period, demonstrating that Homo sapiens reached northwestern Europe long before Neanderthals vanished. The findings are significant in that they demonstrate yet another early presence of our species in Europe, as well as the surprising fact that they were already coping with glacial conditions at this stage. But evidence from Greenland ice core records suggests that the Northern Hemisphere was undergoing a very warm period 45,000 years ago. This begs the question of why these various Homo sapiens groups could not maintain their early occupations of Western and Northern Europe. It's possible that their small groups were susceptible to rapidly changing conditions or were eventually outcompeted by Neanderthals living nearby. For hundreds of thousands of years, Europe was home to the Neanderthals. Our close relatives are thought to have arrived on the continent more than 400,000 years ago, and our species took some time to catch up. But then, in a few thousand years, a ludicrously rapid time frame, Homo sapiens took over the continent. While Homo sapiens made occasional forays into Eastern Europe, modern humans did not penetrate the continent until much later. A modern human tooth discovered at Grotte Mandrin in France, for example, has been dated to approximately 54,000 years ago. Investigations at the site indicate that humans lived in the area before the Neanderthals returned and took over the site once again. This demonstrates that even earlier groups of Homo sapiens dispersing across Eurasia possessed the ability to adapt to harsh climatic conditions. Until recently, it was thought that resilience to cold climate conditions would not appear until several thousand years later. So this is an intriguing and surprising finding. Another unusual thing you see is that Homo sapiens hunters arrive in the Arctic around the same time they arrive in Western Europe. To penetrate beyond 70 degrees north as early as this evidence is suggesting, our tropics-born ancestors, assuming these Arctic pioneers belong to our own species Homo sapiens, had to probably start their into Eurasia odyssey much earlier than 50 or 60,000 years ago. Before getting so far north, they would have had to learn to survive in many different types of environments, and that doesn't happen overnight. This connection implies that these pioneering humans were part of a larger network across Europe at the time, a discovery that has also helped to explain an archaeological anomaly discussed earlier. The Lincombian Renesian Yasmanovician complex of stone tools, named after the sites where they were discovered, has long been a mystery. While the tools have been discovered at sites in the United Kingdom, Germany and Poland, their creators have remained unknown. This is because the age of the tools coincides with the presence of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens in Europe. Because no bones from either human species have ever been discovered alongside them, it was unknown which species created these tools. The researchers also performed radiocarbon dating on human and animal bones from various layers of the site to reconstruct the site's chronology, focusing on bones with traces of human modifications on their surfaces, which link their dates to human presence in the cave. Archaeologists also discovered that the cave was primarily used by hibernating cave bears and denning hyenas, with only occasional human activity. This lower-density archaeological signature was consistent with other sites, 
and can best be explained by short-term visits by small mobile groups of pioneer Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens and Neanderthals coexisted, which is consistent with genomic evidence that the two species interbred on occasion. According to three papers published in the journals Nature and Nature Ecology and Evolution, Homo sapiens associated with the Lincombian Ranisian Jasmanowician culture were present in Central and Northwestern Europe long before Neanderthals were extinct in Southwestern Europe. This also adds to the suspicion that modern humans' invasion of Europe and Asia around 50,000 years ago contributed to the extinction of Neanderthals. The Paleolithic LRJ culture or techno-complex spans Northwestern and Central Europe. The cave site in the Orla River Valley in Germany is one of the LRJ sites due to its distinct composition of bifacial and unifacial points. It turns out that stone artifacts that were thought to be produced by Neanderthals were, in fact, part of the early Homo sapiens toolkit. Because of previous dating, the site was known to be 40,000 years old or older, but without identifiable bones to indicate who made the tools, it was unclear whether they were made by Neanderthals or Homo sapiens. The new findings show that Homo sapiens developed this technology and that they lived this far north at this time, 45,000 years ago. So these are some of Europe's earliest Homo sapiens. The cave site provides evidence for Homo sapiens' first dispersal across higher latitudes in Europe. The scientists analyzed the genetics of hominid bone fragments from the new and deeper excavations, as well as earlier 1930s excavations. Because the DNA in ancient bones is highly fragmented, researchers used specialized techniques to isolate and sequence it, all of which is mitochondrial DNA inherited solely from the mother. Researchers determined that the skeletal fragments belonged to Homo sapiens. Interestingly, several fragments shared the same mitochondrial DNA sequences, including those from different excavations. This suggests that the fragments belong to the same person or their maternal relatives, connecting these recent discoveries to those made decades ago. The bone fragments were initially identified as modern human by analysing bone proteins, a field known as paleoproteomics. The scientists constructed a family tree of early Homo sapiens across Europe by comparing skeletal mitochondrial DNA sequences to mitochondrial DNA obtained from human remains at other Paleolithic sites in Europe. While these cannot tell you much about the person's genetics, they can reveal who they are related to. This revealed that the bones were not only Homo sapiens, but also appeared to be distantly related to other remains discovered in Central Europe. All but one of the thirteen fragments were quite similar to one another and, surprisingly, resembled mitochondrial DNA from a 43,000-year-old skull of a woman discovered in a cave at Zlaty Kun in the Czech Republic. The Zlaty Kun woman, an early European modern human fossil, was discovered in the Czech Republic's caves in 1950. She lived around 43,000 years ago. The Zlaty Kun woman is associated with non-Mausterian and non-initial Upper Paleolithic cultures. One of the earliest cultures of modern humans in Europe, which expanded into Eurasia more than 45,000 years ago. According to genetic dating, the Zlaty Kun individual is the oldest anatomically modern human ever to be genetically sequenced. Her genome represents a deeply dividing lineage prior to the subsequent split between East and West Eurasians. These people do not appear to be the ancestors of later Europeans, as the few ancient DNA samples discovered from this time period are unrelated to later samples. The Zlaty Kun woman has not contributed genetically to later Europeans or Asians. This raises a few questions. Was it a single population, and what is the possible relationship? <laughs>